Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhea. I'm really sorry for my absence around here. It's been quite a busy summer, but we should be getting back to normal now. Uh, here's another weekend meal prep. I started prepping our Sunday lunch on a Saturday evening. I made curry kongs, and then on the Sunday morning, I made a Jamaican-style curry goat, also made rice, paratha roti, and boiled plantains. So if you want to see how this meal came together, let's start cooking. I have two pounds of the conks that I have already cleaned. I scraped it, I rinsed it, I cut it into small pieces and I seasoned it with four tablespoons of the green seasoning, half an onion, a half a tomato, a couple of sprigs of chopped thyme, and I'm going to add in some salt. I'm going to mix it and then we'll add it to the pot. I will also add some black pepper at some point. This was a last minute cook. I also added um, about eight cloves of garlic chopped. So the onion is brown, a little more than what we would like. I've added one teaspoon of cumin seeds in there. Add two tablespoons of curry powder, one tablespoon duck and goat, and one tablespoon cumin ground roasted cumin and cook the curry for a minute or two. I'm going to add a little bit of water, maybe half a cup. I'm going to add the conch, the seasoned conch to the pot. The bottom did not get the seasoning. We'll mix it in there. It's a last minute cook. Stir it well to combine. Some conch fell out of the pot. That's for the ancestors. We'll raise the heat to medium. So medium between medium and high. It has a lovely color already. This color will only develop further. At this point, I'm going to cover the pot and cook it until it releases all its natural juices. And then we'll see if it requires more water for cooking. At this point, we have no idea how long it's going to take. It's beginning to release its juices and now I'll cover the pot. So the conch has been cooking for about 15 minutes. You can also place it in the instant pot at this time but I'm missing the whistle for my instant pot. The conch has been cooking for about say 35 minutes and I tested it and it's semi-cooked. I would say another 40 minutes to cook. A teaspoon more of salt or half a teaspoon. We'll check again later on and now I'm adding the hot water because it needs about 40 more minutes to cook. I want to ensure that it has enough liquid. I have almost seven pounds of goat here that's cut up in quite large chunks because I don't want to spend the time to cut it up smaller. Here I have one tomato, hot pepper, one onion, uh, two teaspoons of black pepper, a couple of sprigs of thyme, about seven sprigs of thyme, about 12 cloves of garlic, and four tablespoons of green seasoning. I'm going to add it to the gold and mix to combine. We'll marinate this overnight and we'll cook it tomorrow. Hopefully the weather will be nice. I think I'm also going to add a little bit of the Jamaican curry powder to this to give it a Jamaican twist. I'll add a tablespoon of salt. Keep in mind this is almost uh, seven pounds of goat. This is six pounds, 11 or 12 ounces. This is the curry powder we have. It says Jamaican style. We got it at BJ's. So now I'll add a couple of tablespoons to the goat. Let me check the ingredients. Spices including turmeric, salt and dehydrated onion. So I'll add one tablespoon. See it's a bright turmeric color so it really has a lot of turmeric. In it. So that's one tablespoon per pound. That's it. I'm going to marinate it overnight. All that flavors penetrate the meat. It's going to be really delicious. The conks has been cooking for about, well, I'd say about 90 minutes. I'm getting ready to finish it up. This is some celery leaves from the garden. I have some bandania and a pimento pepper. Just to freshen up the taste, add another layer of flavor. 
I'm gonna check on the conks and then we'll see if it's ready to be finished. Mmm, it's delicious. Still a little chewy, but that's to be expected with conks. I think I'm gonna cook it uh, for maybe 10 more minutes. It smells heavenly. I'm going to throw in the bandania, celery and pimento pepper. It's beginning to get dark now, and so I need to get out of the outdoors and go back inside. And that's it, you're done. In this bowl, I have uh, eight cups of flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, and two tablespoons of brown sugar. And this is to make the oil roti. This is quite a large amount. I am expecting guests, but you can certainly cut this recipe in half. So I'm going to mix it well to combine. Now I'm gradually going to add the lukewarm water. Mix it. And we've used up about three cups of flour, uh, water so far. Move the flour aside, the dough aside to get to the remainder of the dry flour. And when you have this recipe, it's going to be much easier. Just one last bit of water here. This technique, I'm squeezing it together. And at the same time, I'm rolling it. The dough towards the center. Okay, I'm going to cover this with a kitchen towel and let it sit until I'm ready to cook it. I'm adding a little bit of oil to the pot. Well, we have contained that fire, fortunately, and we've moved on to another pot, an iron pot. You will add the onion and the pepper. Make sure the heat is not too high because you see what happens when the heat is too high and you add oil to a pot. We'll cook until the edges of the onion become golden brown. The goat is well marinated. The flavors have penetrated deep into the meat and there's going to be loads of flavor. Now we're going to add the goat meat in. We're searing that flavors into the meat. I'm raising the heat to high. I'm going to cook for about 10 minutes, stirring. I'll see you back in 10 minutes. I have no idea what happened to the original sound, so I apologize, but the goat has been cooking and searing for about five minutes. Now I'm going to reduce the heat to medium-low, uh, cover the pot and allow it to cook for about 30 to 40 minutes, allow it to release its natural juices and I'll check every 10 minutes. I am famished so I've started eating my lunch. A hungry man, woman, waits on no one. Leo is sun tanning. He absolutely loves the sun. Don't disturb him. Do not disturb. So it's been cooking for about, I'll say, 20 minutes. It has released its juices. The sun is hot, so I'm not too sure about the quality of this film. It's beginning to stick. I did not get a chance to stir it at the 15 minute mark. It looks really delicious, smells amazing. The curry has thickened up nicely. It has a lovely color. I'm sorry for the scraping there, but I need to get to the bottom of this, literally. I'm gonna cover it and cook it for another 10 minutes. As you see, the liquid has thickened, so it means you need to keep a really close eye on it or else it's going to burn. There's browning at the bottom. So I'm gonna keep the fire on low and I'll check you back in 10 minutes. It's 
so the liquid has evaporated. I have developed the flavor here. It's no longer light yellow like turmeric. It has developed into a rich curry color. It tastes really, really amazing. I tasted the sauce already. It has enough of everything. I'm just going to make sure that the goat is fully cooked, not fully cooked, but probably halfway cooked at this point. I tasted it as well for tenderness and it probably needs another hour of cooking because we want it fall apart tender. I'm going to add hot water at this point. I'm not going to add the potato and bell pepper until I'm confident that this uh, goat is tender enough. I'm using a Jamaican style and my own Trini technique of developing this flavor. I'm going to cover with water because goat could never be too tender. Even though, as I said before, Trinidadians, we like it with a little bite it. Cleaning down the sides. I'm sorry for all the scraping, but that's just a part of cooking. The heat is on high. As soon as it comes to bubble, I'll reduce it to medium low. And I'm saying a prayer that this cooks quickly because my guests are arriving in one hour. Enough to cover. Right, I'm gonna cook this uh, for another 20, 30 minutes and see how tender it becomes. It has been sitting, it has a little crust, but it's not too hard, so it's okay. I'm just gonna divide the dough into smaller pieces. It's basically cutting in half until you get to a level. I'm gonna do big ones, so I don't, um, I'm not in the kitchen all day. I am limited on time, so I'll make them large. I have a large tower as well, about 16 inches. It's really up to you and depending on how large your tower is. Let's make them quickly until Loya. One. This piece can go over there, two. It's just a last minute cook today, or last minute guests being invited. I heard that my aunt is uh, visiting from Canada, so I decided I'm gonna do lunch and I only have two hours notice. Only gave myself two hours notice. This one is pretty large. So once it rests for about 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how I wrap it. And, I'm going to try a new wrapping technique today. Let's we'll see how it goes. I'm going to allow the dough, the loya, loya ball, to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's ready to be worked on. I've decided to also make some boiled plantains instead of fried because they're very health conscious, my uncle and aunt, so I'm, they probably will prefer boiled plantains. I'm just going to cut it in half and place it in the pot. I already rinsed it. You can add just a little bit of salt, but not required. I'll boil it for about 15 to 20 minutes, so until it's fully cooked. I'm just gonna roll it out as large as possible. Now I'm going to add some oil. Rub in the oil, sprinkle with flour to help those layers. Three o'clock mark, 12, three. I'm going to this way, as best you can. We're making this stuff up as we go along. Just a little bit of oil. Don't get scared. Calm down, everybody. Just a little bit of oil. We don't eat this every day. So we're going all the way. And like that. Now I'm going to bring it together at the top and seal. Well, let's see how it turns out. I love challenging myself. I love trying new things. So we'll see how this goes. All right, I'll repeat with the remaining dough. And I'm not going to add the excess. Some people will be happy about that. Let me try something else. Look at that. I don't know what I did there and if I could repeat it, but we'll see how it turns out. Let's 
So the goat has been cooking for exactly one hour now. Almost began to stick there and burn. Always keep an eye on your stove. The meat is falling apart from the bone, which means it's semi-cooked. I tasted it again. Delicious. And it could do with about uh, maybe 30 to 40 more minutes of cooking. I'm going to add in the potatoes now. Now is a good time to check the salt. Mmm, yeah, good. I'm just going to slice a few pieces of bell pepper to add to this. I know that's a must in Jamaican curries. I'm going to add a bit of the bell pepper. We call it sweet pepper in Trinidad. Not too much. I'll add some potatoes. So I added all the potato. It was about four or five small potato and the entire bell pepper. And I'm going to wait for this water to evaporate and I'm going to add a little more water. So this is a second set of water. Goat is very tough. Sometimes it takes a long time. We want it a little tender today. So I'm going to see you back in about 10 minutes. I'm going to add water, but not all the way to cover, maybe halfway, because we don't want the potatoes to overcook. Quick stir, and I'll cook it for 20 minutes. I've just finished off with a little touch of salt and some chopped scallions. The potatoes are fully cooked, the goat is tender, all the ingredients have come together in the perfect, delicious union. It tastes absolutely amazing and simply delicious. And also you can see that the gravy is rich and thick to eat with that roti, the oil roti, the paratha, the basap shot or white rice uh, with the side of boiled plantain. The guests are bringing a salad and it's going to be a very delicious meal today. I don't want to break up the potatoes so I'll just do one show and that's it. To probably just make it um, reduce about five minutes more. I have pressed out the loya with the oil. I'm just going to roll it out. I floured my surface. Roll it out as large as your tower. I'm not going to show you all of them because I need to get dressed. Always have food ready for when your guests arrive. You don't know how hungry they'll be. Okay, and then once the tower is hot, we'll place it on. Okay. So now I'll lift up the roti. Out dough, place it on the tower, stretch it to fit the tower and also to shape it. It's very forgiving. Now I'll brush it with oil. I really like a combination of oil and butter, but if you're making all roti, you could use oil. But the flavor is not going to be as delicious as if you added a little bit of the good quality butter. I'm ready to flip. The husband went to take out the heat on the goat. I'm going to put a little bit of butter, oil, whatever on this side. I'm not going to beat this on the towel because the guy needs clap it with your hands. I'm going to say a prayer again so that I don't get burned. This side is too white, I'm going to flip it. Allow it to cook for a couple of seconds and then we'll take it off and beat the roti. And remember Guyanese roti is much smaller than this. I'm pressed for time. I need to be efficient, productive in the shortest amount of time. We're just pressing the ends to make sure it's cooked. So now it's fully cooked. As I said before, you may not have heard, I'm not going to beat it on the towel like a Trini Parata because this is a Guyanese version. Just making sure that the edges are cooked.
All right, and now we'll beat it with our hand. May the good Lord help us. This is not my idea of fun. Clap. That's why they call it a clap routine. You clap it in your hands. But I might have to go to the hospital. Third degree birds. I think that's it. That is it. You're nice. Soft clap roti. Enjoy. And that's all there is to eat, my sweet friends. A Jamaican Lovely. style curry goat and a Guyanese when style clap roti. Like it's that. always interesting and exciting to add new variations to all classics. It's perfect. It was an absolute joy cooking for you and my family today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a lovely comment below. I always love hearing from you. Until next time, stay safe, be well, cook, share, and love. Bye-bye.